Mr. Crispin here once again and yes I am still alive I've not had much workshop time recently and uh, not much workshop time equals not much to video but I'm back for a bit and I'm going to be carrying on with the cylinders so in today's video I'm going to do all the drilling and tapping and reaming in the uh, backs of these blocks so that I can screw them onto the frames and after that I'm going to make a start on finishing off the radial milling that's required and you can see I've roughed them out and I just did that with a face mill working down to a guideline that I'd scribed on so I just held this in different angles in the milling vice and face milled down to near the line um, probably in the next video I'll actually radially mill these to give a nice milled surface and I'll be milling out a strip all down the middle where the insulation will go uh, and I'll probably make a start on that in this video but if you haven't seen uh, the chassis yet, have a look at the videos called uh, Assembling the Chassis. Um, but basically the cylinders will sit on somewhere like this. And what I've got to do with these hole positions is work out how to get them both in the same place, uh, both in the right place, and uh, both of the right alignment. Now if you saw a video called Making the Frames, which I must have made uh, over a year ago, you'll have seen me scribe this uh, angled line on and that angled line is referred to as the motion centre line and to see what we do with the motion centre line I'll draw on an approximate centre line of this cylinder so that's the centre line of the main bore and this line needs to correspond pretty exactly with this scribed line I've drawn on and this scribed line goes from the centre of this bore, hopefully, to the middle of the centre driving axle. I've got three driving axles. This is the centre driving axle. And this line should correspond with the middle of this axle when it's at its running position. Now the drawing shows ten tapped holes in the block to go through these holes, uh, but that wouldn't give me any position other than a loose position so what I'm going to do is uh, sacrifice the middle two and put two dowels in instead so I'll put two dowels in the back of here and that will lock the cylinder into one position and seeing as I drilled these as a pair if I do exactly the same doweling on both blocks I should end up with a very accurate result both in terms of where the blocks sit on the frames and where they sit in relation to each other. The holes are currently just under 5.30 seconds so I'm going to ream them out 5.30 seconds for the dowel. Uh, I could open them up bigger but I risk losing uh, the position which I'm quite happy with at the moment. There's only a few thousands to come out um, with this reamer. So I'm uh, ready to put these holes in, I've marked on with a height gauge and you'll see how I'm going to make sure they end up in uh, the right place. You could use an edge finder to begin with but uh, I'll show you how I'm going to do it. And uh, I'm putting the datum face against the fixed jaw so that's the back side of the cylinder as it sits on the loco. And uh, before we do anything, I'll just check it's sitting properly in the vise. Apologies if you can't see the gauge very well. Well within half a sound, that's fine. I'm happy with that. So first up, with a centre drill, I'm going to find the position of it by eye. And when I find a crosshairs by eye with a centre drill, I just turn it so that the V 
he's pointing right at me and then I can line that up One eight three minute. Right, now comes the measurement. What I've got here is a 1 8 dowel pin which should be a nice fit in there which it is. So looking from this angle I'm now going to measure the position of this pin from the datum corner and uh, currently the spindle is still lined up with this pin so uh, I can move an accurate amount in either direction once I've measured it. Uh, to measure it I could use some kind of micrometer uh, I could hold something nice and parallel up against the edge and use a micrometer across the pin uh, but what I'm actually going to do is use slip gauges so uh, I know the nominal position from each face to the centre of the hole I know the radius of the pin so I can create a slip gauge stack that is the theoretical correct distance from the edge of the pin to this face Okay, so we're a thou and a half in this axis, so that's not bad, so I lined it up by eye. So now I'm going to correct the position slightly. So having uh, adjusted to the correct position, I now need to open the hole up. But as we all know, if I go back in with a drill now, the drill will just deflect into the old hole. So I need to use something that's going to cut its own hole. And I have just the thing. A little milling cutter, 4 mil milling cutter, which will just open the hole out nicely. And now the 530 second reamer. So I now have all the dowel holes in, and uh, I can use these holes uh, to position the blocks while I transfer all the holes that I've already drilled in the frames. I've departed slightly from the drawing, as you might remember from earlier, there was just two rows. I've decided to add a third row in, so uh, that's another five holes along the top. And uh, those holes will correspond with this little face along here, so I'm going to put another five holes in there. And the reason for that is that this uh, cavity here needs to be sealed all the way around to stop exhaust gases leaking out. And I wasn't convinced uh, I'd get a seal with just two rows of holes. So ultimately I'll be using this plate drilling jig that I uh, used and showed earlier. Um, but what I'm going to do first is put my dowels in and then uh, line up this uh, block with the frame and there's no play which is the whole idea. So that uh, position and angle is totally set. Now I'm just going to use a drill that matches the uh, hole size in the frame just to mark the position. And uh, this is only a guide because the actual positions are going to come from the plate drilling jig. This is just a uh, double check so to speak. Now if I pull that out, I've got uh, all my hole positions. Uh, these eight which are going to be the M5s and then the five M3s along the top and that should drop on and then the um, holes as you can see should all be concentric the holes and the dots uh, unfortunately I hadn't thought of this row at the time of making the jig but uh, oh well
Well that's all the drilling done and I showed a few clips of it there but uh, basically I've got two dowel holes, eight uh, holes to be tapped M5 and five holes to be tapped M3 obviously times two. Now you may notice that on these holes I've actually uh, almost counterbored them, I don't know if you can see that, but the first mil and a half of each hole is counterbored to the clearance diameter of the screw. So in uh, the case of these M5 bolts they're 5one millimeters. And this was suggested by David Ticehurst who said this is how he used to do tapped holes in the Phillips tool room and uh, so I gave it a go and uh, it's made a very nice job of it. Apparently this is what they do on some car engine blocks and it helps to give a nice mating surface. I'm ready to do a trial assembly. I've put the uh, dowels in and uh, I've stoned all the uh, mating faces and cleaned everything obviously. And so let's see if it all fits. So there we are, they've all gone in, so I can get you a better view on some of these. So two dowels and all the screws. Next up then I'm going to try and tackle some of this milling. First up I'm going to rough the top level out leaving a few thou on. Interesting camera effect there, that cutter is actually doing a thousand RPM and uh, it is going the right way. That is that rough down. Now what I'm going to do is scribe a line on uh, for that little step and rough round the bottom half and I'll start finishing off. I'm going to come in, along, out and then get rid of the excess. Well that's the basic shape, now all I'm going to do is check the depths with a depth mic and uh, work out how much more I need to take off each one and measure these widths, work out how much I need to take off the walls and obviously just make sure I'm coming right up to the scribed line so uh, I'll do that off camera and then we will reconvene. Ok, 
Okay, so now that's done, time to put four holes in. And uh, these holes are purely so I can see through the blocks into where the ports are. And uh, this will allow me to actually see the valve as it opens and closes when I'm setting the timing up. These holes will have removable plugs that I can take out when I need to see uh, exactly where the valve is. Well I found the position on hole one and I've got the Colin Chipette vice stop lined up so away we go. Now what I'd normally do at this point is load a um, spring-loaded tap follower into the chuck or spindle and then I'd use that to guide the tap but this tap has no centre hole in the end so I'm going to have to use a slightly different method. So in this case I've locked the tap in the Jacobs chuck, I've slackened the belt off on the motor so everything turns nice and freely and now I'm just going to wind this in manually and uh, that should give me a nice perpendicular thread. Well, there's the results of today's video. The milling in the front and all the tapped holes in the back. And in the next video, I'm going to continue milling all the way around here and uh, all the way around here. And that'll be uh, between centres with a dividing head on the milling machine. So I'm looking forward to trying that. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed watching and see you on the next video.